Premier. Once we get across that road to 1200 feet, that should be our objective point. That's where we're going to be security for an hour. Squad 2, we just got off the road there. Contact across the hill! <laughs> hey, Spike Barkey, move up on line! We're going to see you up there. Steve, go to your right more! Buddy, rush back! Right, uh, quicker. Uh, we're stand by for nine yeah, line. Nine line. Yeah. Fernandez!
I'm be honest, I'm gonna eat. Oh. This is as it gets. <laughs> We'll get a lot of good training out of this, so make sure you guys are paying attention. Ask a lot of questions. A, a lot of you probably are not going to understand fully what's going on or how, how to do something, why we're doing something. Sit on that so you're not like losing heat. Everyone good with that? Oh. All right. Um, it's slippery, a lot of mud. There's a pond right over there. So just make sure when you guys are going on these movements, you guys are aware of your surroundings and you don't go walking into a any UXO um, market. Identify it. Don't like touch it or anything, but like pull a coordinate where it's at, back up. 100 feet or more. Hey, quick, just go. Move him, move him. Give him the safety vic. The rifle's falling. 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 Yep. A uh, line of departure. LD. Line of departure. Just know what to do. Any questions on mission? Secures Firepoint Oscar, so that's tactical task, in order to. This is extremely important. You need to have a well thought out mission statement with a tactical task. So, there'll be a tactical task, and there'll be an. Anyone has heard of Broad E? Replan targets. If there's a, an artillery unit in the area that you're, you're going to have access to that's supporting you, you brief that here. We'll also go through your IFAC and talk about what's in there, just like you should know all your equipment and you should know what's in your IFAC and when, when it's going to come in handy. They'll throw it on each other, so if I really need it, pull it, loop it around their leg, feed it, and then pull it straight. Um, fight his foot to bring it all the way up here. And then from there, you know, there's a chance for the turn to get, to get tangled. It's not going to have a proper uh, sitting. So it's gonna take you forever to crank that. For a tourniquet to be uh, placed well, it only should take you two to three cranks. And nothing is like cinch tight. This is the trick here. The tighter you pull this, the less you have you have to crank your uh, butt. So if you make it really, really tight, once you tar start turning the the cravat, it'll only take like two or three twists, and this thing's gonna be like really painful. So that's one, two. Three. So, yeah, that means uh, if your fingers don't go through, that means you're tight. After hemorrhage, right? That means you are you're bleeding out. You're losing years of blood. It's gonna look like so it has agents that help promote clotting. You want this to cover every single part of the wound so that the bleeding stops. In your wound, you can take your extra. And you just hold it there, and you're going to hold pressure for three minutes or until the bleeding has stopped. Uh, you can see one half of it here. This H. And then this this is the, the side that goes down to the wound. But that hard structure helps to provide support and extra pressure to the area that you're packing. Pressure. So, say Doc Mercado got shot. If you can't see, you can get up and move to where you can. So say he's got gunshot wound. First thing you also kind of do, 
hold some pressure while you get out your stuff. <coughs> you can do it one-handed, it's possible, by the way. So I'm gonna make my knot, and I'm gonna pack that into my wound. And then I'm going to use my finger over finger method. Now I'm gonna get out my H bandage. Happens a lot, it's okay if it does. You wanna try and keep this part rolled up, it's gonna make your life easier. Cause this white part to cover your wound, and you want the H to be on top. And then you can start wrapping, and then you just unravel this as you go. And then kind of like with the tourniquet, just trying to try and keep it flat and when you put it up, figure out what to do with it later. <laughs> and then there's a piece of Velcro on here. Just Velcro the bandage to itself. Look, whatever. We have our hook here. You're just going to hook the bandage. There's teeth in here. You're just going to grab like an end of it and then just hook it onto itself. And then with this, you can also... You can make sure that all the white is tucked away. So I have a little bit right here. Just tuck it in. Cut up, cut up. One for like a junction. Yeah. I haven't done that in a minute. The very first thing I found is a combat gauze. Let's say you decide to rip your sleeve and use like an improvised bandage. You can use duct tape to secure that. For me. Uh. So, same thing as if there's been a wound on, wound on an extremity, you're going to take your gauze, pack it. We don't drop it. Ball it up, finger over finger. <laughs> same thing, pad over the wound. Now for this, this is the trick egg. Now we're going to wrap around. And you want to kind of like around a booty seat. I think we have ice shield. Yeah, wrap it around their waist, wrap it around their legs, and then just keep feeding it with the waist. Yeah. Any other? These are going to be your, for superficial wounds, there's antibiotic ointment <laughs> and band-aids in them. You guys, you guys, how many of you have gotten nicks and on your knuckles you can buddy treat each other which has already been demonstrated to you how to use it also a dry birth dressing the nice thing about this being inside of the plastic is that it's clean their burns you know exactly ieds typically saddle injuries so there's several things you have to worry about with saddle injuries then it just gives you like still have to calculate that but it's helpful for someone at a quick glance to be like this person has a lot of burns or this is going to be like okay all right man first the dingens will be the only for this portion training Randy Safety Officer V. Spencer Nelson. Um, we're going to go over some basic mounting to it. So I need to be focused and concentrated on the training and listen to your instructors. Any questions? All right. Range <laughs> Safety Brief. So we're at a mount town currently. Just to orient you guys, we'll be utilizing this portion of the mount town. So anything. That's good. All right, all right. Okay. So for range safety, we're going to be utilizing blanks, uh, blank ammunition. How far away can we be when we shoot? Five, Five feet. feet. Five meters. Five meters. Five meters. Five meters. <laughs> All right, if you look around, a lot of these buildings do not have windows. A lot of the windows are very short. Don't go like this. Uh, so, don't be dragging them. I'll just show you as an example. So, <laughs> Hi. reason being is, if I'm here, my barrel's still right here, but you already see the whole body. It's perfect. You're gonna fucking orient yourself to where you wanna walk. Your torso is gonna be facing the threat all the time. And be high ready. And then here. And then it, right? Keep my muzzle down the range. And he'd start walking to go. And I'm just gonna stay right here glued to him. Providing shield. No one. Shoot. Shoot. Now I see him. 
he saw me, he already knew where he was going to shoot before I even saw him. So, and that's the thing about CQB, it's a split position thing. My leg is right by that. So I did, really did. It was all that rainbow six, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. right. Ring right right across. Right You should just do your eyes green. Everybody. 